Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Fire damages homes church in central Kingston. A fire yesterday afternoon damaged several homes and a church in downtown Kingston. Residents reported that the blaze started about 5.45 p.m. The cause of the blaze is unknown. Three units from the fire department responded to the blaze, where personnel conducted cooling down operations. A police team was also deployed to the scene. No injuries have been reported. Pepper killed in Manchester drive-by shooting. Police are probing the murder of a man during a drive-by shooting in Banana Gong District in Manchester on Tuesday night. The deceased has been identified as 50-year-old Brandon Wright, otherwise called Pepper, a resident of Banana Ground. Banana Ground, a farming community, is located in the Belfield Division, north of Mandeville. A police report said about 8 p.m., Wright was at a shop in his community when gunmen traveling in a Toyota Yaris motor vehicle opened fire hitting him. He was later pronounced dead at hospital. Councillor Murray Mitchell, People's National Party, Benfield Division, has since condemned the murder. This kind of barbaric act we are not accustomed to in Banana Ground. I urge the people to act swiftly and get the matter cleared up so the citizens can be assured that all is well and the community is back to its normal, peaceful and tranquil self, he said. Statistics from the Jamaica Constabulary Force show that up to June 26, Manchester recorded 20 murders compared to 13 for the corresponding period last year. 11 Arrested, Illegal Guns Seized in Newlands, Portmore Police Operation some 11 persons were arrested by the police in an operation in Newlands, Portmore, St. Catherine yesterday morning. Two illegal guns, three pounds of ganja, and three boxes of uncustomized cigarettes were also recovered in the operation. The police, with the support of the Jamaica Defense Force personnel, went to the area yesterday morning in search of wanted men. The operation saw the team conducting searches of several open lots and other properties. Operations Officer for the St. Catherine South Police Superintendent Hopeson Nicholson said the seizure of the two guns bring to 32 the number of illegal firearms recovered so far this year. Bail extended for Manchester taxi operator charged in mob killing case. Orlando Powell, the Manchester taxi operator charged with murder in relation to the May 6 mob killing of 61 year old Shifton Campbell, has had his bail extended when he appeared in the Manchester Parish Court on Wednesday. Campbell, who was described as a well-respected citizen and dedicated community member of Victoria Town in southern Manchester, died after a crowd of people beat him on Lower Manchester Road. Powell, who is said to have mistakenly identified Campbell as a thief, was offered bail on June 2nd in the sum of $500,000. He is to return to court on September 14, as the case file was incomplete when the matter was mentioned before Judge Monique Harrison on Wednesday. Campbell was buried last Saturday at the family plot in Victoria Town. 20-year-old charged with murder of shopkeeper in Westmoreland. The Darleston police in Westmoreland have charged 28-year-old Justine Barnes, a farmer of Pike District in the parish, with the murder of 55-year-old shopkeeper on Saturday, May 14. Reports are that about 10.30 p.m., the shopkeeper, Magdalene Clark was at her home on Bellevue Main Road in the parish, where she was shot several times to the upper body. The police were summoned and on their arrival, Clark was taken to the hospital where she was pronounced dead. During the investigation that followed, Barnes was identified as one of the suspects. On Friday, June 24, he was taken into custody and subsequently charged on Tuesday, June 28, after a question and answer session was conducted with him in the presence of his attorney. No criminal charges to be laid against parents of wandering baby. No criminal charges are to be brought against the parents of a baby on wandering along a major roadway in St. Catherine recently. The update was given by the police in a press release Tuesday night after a video of the incident made its rounds on social media. Confirming that the child's father was located shortly after the events on the video, the police said no criminal investigation is being pursued at this time. According to the police, following inquiries made into the circumstances, the case was brought to a close after officers were satisfied that no intentional harm or neglect was meant for the child. However, the police assured that the necessary follow-up is being done to 
with the Community Safety and Security Branch to support the family. The parents were also referred to the relevant state agencies for advice, the police said. In the viral video that captured the incident, a man could be heard cursing after he stopped behind the baby, who was almost in the middle of the road. Another motorist in front of him, behind whose vehicle the baby stood, exited and approached the child. A passing police vehicle immediately stopped and two policemen disembarked. One of the policemen took up the child and gave it to the other. They were going back into their vehicle when the video ended. Several social media users have launched a tirade on the baby's mother, bashing her for what they described as careless behavior. Chang says security forces to change strategy at the end of SOE. The opposition Tuesday refused to budge from its stand against prolonging the current state of emergency in St. Catherine, forcing the government to withdraw the controversial regulations tabled in the House of Representatives last week. In the meantime, Minister of National Security Dr. Horace Chang said the security forces have been very professional in the execution of their duties where the SOE has been declared. He informed the House of Representatives that the sudden rise in gang violence in the Paris capital Spanish town has decreased since the SOE was effected on June 17. The situation in St. Catherine, he said, has improved significantly and while over the 10 days preceding the declaration of the SOE, there were 15 murders in the parish, there have only been four since the declaration and in the last few absolutely no murders. However, despite the performance of the security forces, the SOE will end on Friday, July 1, when the proclamation, which herald its assignment, expires. They will naturally make changes to the strategy and the deployment, and we expect to maintain this status quo, which is the stability gained over the last 14 days, and if there is significant changes, the government will be prepared to act to protect the citizens of St. Catherine and wherever it happens in Jamaica, Chung told the House of Representatives. We have so far responded formally both orally and in writing. The government is of the considerated view, although both sides of the allies are practically agreed on changes to the debate, more time is required to do a thorough review of the emergency power regulations and ensure that they are in keeping with the constitution, the minister told the House. Chang also told the House that the government have also taken note of the ruling of the constitutional court, which awarded close to 18 million in damages to a St. James tax operator Roshin Clark, for unlawfully being detained for seven months under an SOE effect in St. James in January 2018. He said that the government, however, welcomed the findings by the court that the SOE and by extension, the regulations were aimed at preventing and curtailing the increased crime rate in St. Catherine. He said that there is still no great concern among the public than the escalating crime rate, and it was the conclusion of the court that the aim of the government in creating the SOEs with a legitimate aim to deal with serious crimes and the government welcomes the sentiments. However, he noted that, at the same time, the court also noted that some of the regulations were too wide and therefore were not reasonably justified for the aim and consequently declared them to be not constitutional. He said that the government in the meantime has consulted the opposition and thanked its leader Mark Golden for his written comments to the Attorney General. Responding to the minister, leader of opposition Mark Golden said that the ruling of the Constitutional Court was a profound juncture in terms of jurisprudence, noting that since the tabling of the regulations, the opposition has met with heads of the security forces. Golden recalled that the chartered rights were approved by a consensus between the Jamaica Labour Party administration under Prime Minister Bruce Golden and with the support of former Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller. He said that violating that input by unconstitutional measures is a risky way for the state to proceed because the compensation agreements are such that it could be a huge cost to the public purse. I am glad that the government has decided to spend the time to get the regulation in a form that will be compliant with the constitution going forward and I welcome that decision, Golden said. Jamaica reports 57 new COVID cases, 3 deaths. Jamaica reported 57 new cases of COVID-19 and three fatalities on Tuesday, according to the latest statistics from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. This puts the total number of cases of the virus since the start of the pandemic to 142,683 and the death toll to 3,124. Of the newly reported cases, 
there were 35 females and 22 males, with ages ranging from 6 months to 97 years. The cases are recorded in Kingston and St. Andrew 33, St. Catherine 9, St. James 7, Westmoreland 6, and Trelawney 2. Meanwhile, the latest fatalities are a 54-year-old woman from Kingston and St. Andrew, whose death was previously reported under investigation in September 2021, a 64-year-old man from Kingston and St. Andrew, whose death was previously reported under investigation in November 2021, and 102-year-old woman from St. Catherine recorded in June 2022. The country also recorded 130 new recoveries, bringing the total number of recoveries to 90,875. The positivity rate for the latest run of testing was 17.7%. There are 113 people hospitalized, six of them critically ill. There are 1,349 confirmed active cases on the island. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.